Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today we are introducing a new character in our series on the Anti-Federalist Papers, Cato. Cato was an Anti-Federalist author, this is a pen name, because these essays were published anonymously. Now, we don't really know for sure who the author was, though most historians agree it was probably longtime governor of New York, George Clinton. Though we do want to note that there's a pretty sizable subset of historians who think it may be one of a number of other characters. However, the wide agreement is that it was probably George Clinton. And it makes a lot of sense. George Clinton, to this day, is the person who served the longest term as governor of New York. And during that time, the Revolutionary War was won. The 1780s went by and the Constitution was written and put out to the public. It just so happens that George Clinton had sent the delegation for New York that went to the Constitutional Convention. And while Alexander Hamilton hung around and famously helped create that document, Robert Yates, Robert Yates and John Lansing, after just five weeks, said, Oh no, they're trying to create a federal government here, a national government, and they left. They went back home and talked to their buddy George Clinton, who was governor of New York, who also didn't like that because New York was starting to get real powerful, and they really liked that power. Additionally, they really liked that they made most of their money from imports on tariffs, and they didn't want to lose that to the federal government. So, once the Constitution is signed and published to the public, Cato, aka probably George Clinton, was ready to go. George Clinton would, uh, in a series of seven papers, go from uh, late September 1787 to early January 1788, publishing these essays, uh, discussing a variety of things. But what Cato, as we will see in future discussions, what Cato really focuses on is the presidency. Most anti-federalists attack the supremacy clause or vagueness in the Constitution or the House or the Senate. Cato's really the only one who actually attacks the office of the presidency. It's an interesting discussion and I can't wait to have it, which, by the way, over the next seven weeks, we will be diving into each of Cato's seven essays in particular, followed, of course, by a summary of our discussion. Now, before we go, I want to know why he would have chosen Cato. See, originally, Cato was a famous Roman leader who became famous for opposing Julius Caesar. Cato, known to most of the founders, uh, was a defender of Republican values and virtue. He stood up against Caesar's attempted dictatorship for the people. And as someone writing against the presidency under the Constitution, Cato is an extremely fitting name. I should also note that about 70 years before the ratification debates, there was a series of essays and a book published under the title Cato's Letters in England, which also discussed Republican values. So Cato was a name for standing up for Republican virtue uh, during this era. Everyone knew it as such, and that's why the author, probably, probably Governor Clinton, but maybe someone else, that's why they would have chosen this name. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be reading the seven papers over the next several weeks. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe so you get those. If you're new here, hit like. And I want to throw one more fun fact at you. Even though George Clinton was a leading anti-federalist, whether or not this is George Clinton, he was publicly a leading anti-federalist, but he would go on to become the fourth vice president of the United States under that very constitution and the only one to serve as vice president under two different presidents. Make sure you hit like so more people can learn about the revolution with us, and I'll be back with another founder for you tomorrow and Cato number one next Friday.